Hello and welcome to a tutorial by Harla Pengren. I'm Norm and I will be your host today. So today we're going to make things blurry. This is an example of the image that we are going to create. There are a couple of cool concepts with this scene. First, we will cover how to create a texture with a random color. And second, we will talk about how to set up the camera and then create a depth of field. And depth of field just means that there is an item in focus that draws the viewer's attention and everything surrounding it is blurry. So let's start. We have a new scene. We are going to start by deleting this cube. We'll create a plane, a ground plane, scale it up. We will add a UV sphere and we're going to make it rest on top of that plane. That looks good. Let's maybe scale that down just a little bit. All right, we'll set the shading to smooth. Now let's set up the texture. We will change to cycles, go to textures, add new. Let's split the area and show nodes. So let's change the name of this material to marble. We're going to give this the appearance of, of a marble. All right, so first thing we're going to do is make the random color. We will add a node, object info, and you will see that object info has this element random. And what this random does is it is a unique value between zero and one. And if I duplicate this object, it will get a different value. So every object has a value between zero and one and it's unique to that object. The way that we can use this is with a color ramp. So we will add a color ramp. We'll put the random as input to the factor and output the color to our diffuse shader. And what this will do, since random generates a number between zero and one, it will map between zero on the left and one on the right. And we can add several different colors here. So let's make one a bright green, and then we'll add just a few more. Total of four. We'll make this one maybe a, a deep red, bright red. And we can make this one blue. And maybe this one we'll make a pink. All right, so great. We have our we have our colors. We are going to change this instead of linear, which creates a gradient between each of these, change this to constant. And as you can see, that means any numbers between zero and this are green. Red for this er numbers in this area, blue for numbers in this area, and magenta for for colors in this area. Now, if we go ahead and render our scene, we'll see that it creates this, this nice green ball. Great, but not really that interesting. So let's duplicate this. And create a bunch of different ones. And now render. And great, we see that we have many different colors of balls. Perfect. 
So now let's make that material just a little bit more interesting. Let's add a glass node on top of that. We'll take a look at the preview to see what we're doing. Maybe about 0.3 on the mix. And now let's re-render. Without any fancy, fancy lighting, looks good. So let's add, let's add a light to the scene. Just a flat plane, scale it up, new emission, make it about a 50. Take a look at that. Too bright, but you get the, you get the picture. All right, great. So we'll do maybe about 15. Much better. All right, perfect. So looks good. If we increase the number of samples, let's go 200 on the samples. Let's also move also move the plane, we scale up the plane, move it, great, and we'll take a look at that. All right, so the scene is, is looking great. But what we want to do now is we want to make some objects in focus, some objects out of focus. And to do that, we are going to start off by clicking on the camera, go to the camera tab, and we are going to enable limits. What this will do, if you go top view, you'll see that it's added a line. So you can see where the camera is pointing. It also adds this little yellow cross. And this yellow cross corresponds to the distance that is here in the depth of field. And now if I move that distance, you'll see that the distance changes. And we can use this to aim at a particular ball. So in this case, I want to aim exactly at that ball, which looks pretty good. This is the ball that we want to be in focus. And we want it to be out of focus the farther away that it gets from the ball. And to do this, we will go to the compositor, which is on the nodes screen, this little picture. We'll click Use Nodes. And we're going to add a filter called defocus. And I'll just go ahead and click it here. Connect the image into the input and the image to the output. We also want to connect Z into the Z and click on the use Z buffer. The settings that we're going to focus on are f-stop and max blur. So f-stop is a photography term that's used to describe how much light a lens lets in. And the bigger this number, the smaller amount of light the lens let in. A bigger number also means more of the scene is in focus. So what we're going to do is we're first going to set this 
to 9. And we will go ahead and render. All right, good. So not much difference from what we had before. Now we're going to switch this over to slot 2 so we are able to compare. We're going to change the f-stop to 1.8 and re-render. And there you see that it makes a big difference. So the ones that we focus on are in focus, but ones as it gets farther away from these balls, they become less and less focused. Now we can change the amount of blur by changing the max blur. So just to toggle back and forth between slot one and slot two, this is f-stop of nine, this is f-stop of 1.8. And that's all there is. Thanks for watching. We would appreciate any, any comments below. We'll also be interested if there are any other tutorials that you would like to see. Thanks for watching.